While browsing YouTube, I saw a video titled Mudan Hensokuki with CVT in parentheses, and of course I clicked it. Someone made a beltless CVT that transmits power using a wheel, spinning between two cones instead of a belt. It looks amazing, I want one. Luckily, it's actually a pretty simple design. First, let's understand how it works, then we can design and build one ourselves. CVT transmissions usually change the gear ratio using pulleys that expand or contract, based on torque. Unlike regular gears, they offer a range of gear ratios, not a fixed one. As the engine is under a high load, the pulley connected to it gets smaller and the one connected to the wheel gets bigger. This changes the ratio. The engine spins more and the wheel spins less. For example, instead of spinning twice when the engine turns 5 times, the wheel spins only once. This effectively doubles the torque. To build this design myself, I need a high torque electric motor with a gearbox. Luckily, I found plenty of them in Turkish Kreslix basically from a guy and I bought 6 of them, so that I can use them in future projects. The only problem is, I need couplings that fit this motor, parts that let me connect the motor shaft to other things. I couldn't find anything with the right dimensions locally, and the 3D printed couplings I tried before didn't last very long. Since I have 6 of these motors, I want a more permanent solution, that I can rely on and use in the future projects. And that's where this video's sponsor GLC CNC comes in. GLC CNC is an online machining service that can produce your design with many different materials. So I measured the motors, made sure they matched the data sheets, and then started designing a simple yet functional coupling. Then I uploaded the design to GLC CNC right away. I chose aluminium with no surface finishing because I want the machinic marks to be visible. A thread will be tapped for the screws as well. For that, I will upload a simple technical drawing. I also added the necessary shaft tolerance to the same drawing so it will fit easily. Alright, we can place the order. And here they are already, let's open them up. As always, it came nicely packaged and the dimensions were exactly as I wanted. Let's see if it fits the shaft. I gave it a tolerance so that it wouldn't be too tight but also not too loose. And they made it exactly how I wanted. This is such a great service. If you also want to get your design manufactured in aluminium, steel or many other materials and delivered to your hands just like this, don't forget to check out GLC CNC. There's a great coupon for you for your first order in the link below. Now that we have solved the coupling issue, let's move on to the rest of the design. To change the gear ratio, a sliding mechanism is used, so the wheel can move along the cones. Normally, in CVTs, this is done physically, using springs and weights, so the ratio changes depending on preset torque and speed values. But in our system, we can determine the gear ratio entirely ourselves, which means we can always keep it at the most optimal ratio. Just like the MPPT system used in solar panels, we could develop an algorithm that finds the minimum power tracking point for maintaining the same speed with the least power. This way, maybe we can use much less electricity while producing more power. Now, let's return to the physical design. I start with the first cone, then add the part that will hold it with a bearing, and then the motor on the other side to rotate it. Moving on to the other cone and its holders. Then I started the sliding wheel mechanism. I am adding the steel rod and its holders on both ends. Now I move to the stepper motor and the coupling I will use for it. I am designing the wheel next, making it thin and flexible on purpose. The distance between the cones is not adjustable, and this wheel will be slightly larger than the distance. That way, we ensure it presses against both cones. After that, I put the necessary holes for the screws and create slots for the sensors and magnets. I finished the design by adding a base plate and a mount for the potentiometers. As the design is complete, let's get printing. While the parts are printing, I want to thank the 6 channel members who helped me make these projects. You too can help me make even bigger projects by clicking the join button. In this project, the parts aren't under much of a load, so I kept the internal infill, top and bottom layers and the other wall count to a minimum, to save material and print faster. I also changed things up on the cones and used multicolored filaments. The colors will change along with the gear ratios. Lastly, I had the base plate cut with a laser and I secured the magnets into the cones using the screw holes I had left. Let's move on to the assembly. I will leave you alone with the stop motion animation. If you want to make this transmission yourself, you can find the printables link in the description. Lastly, I installed the electronics. A little soldering is needed, but the rest is just jumper wires and terminal blocks. The electronics are quite simple. I'm using a switch to home the stepper motor, 
For control, there's an Arduino, a stepper driver, two potentiometers, and a DC motor driver. There are also magnets on the cones to measure their speed, but for now, I don't want to deal with Hall effect sensors. So that's for another video. At first, I put the wheel together using a rubber band, but any of the glues I had didn't stick to the rubber. So I printed another one without holes and made a non-slip surface using double-sided tape. In the end, this is how everything turned out. Let's test it. First, we start the motor. Then we can change the wheel's position. When the wheel is in the center, both cones spin at the same speed. But when it goes to the edge, the second cone slows down significantly. On the way back, when the wheel is in the middle, the two cones briefly become perfectly synchronized. Then the second cone starts spinning much faster. Unfortunately, since the gear ratio of the first motor isn't very high and there's currently no control system for its speed, the speed of the first cone also changes. Right now we are driving it open loop, just with voltage. Once we start measuring the speed using hole sensors, we could create a closed loop control system so that the potentiometer directly adjusts speed rather than the voltage. So unless we change it, the speed will remain stable. So does this transmission actually work? Can it be used in industry? Unfortunately, it has a few downsides that limits its commercial use. First of all, the wheel in between will constantly wear out and need replacing, and it might slip under high torque applications. Plus, due to the design, the gear ratio on one side of the wheel is not equal to the other side, so there's always some slipping. To reduce this, I made the wheel thinner, but as long as it's not infinitely thin, there will be always slippage. Second problem, the sliding wheel mechanism doesn't work unless the system is already spinning. That is, the cones must be already rotating to change the gear ratio. This causes an issue. If the ratio is too high, the motor will struggle to start, and since it can't start, it won't be able to change the ratio either. It's like trying to start a car in the sixth gear, and you can only reduce gears after the car is actually moving. Actually, a bicycle will be a better example. You can only change gears when pedaling. This is not impossible to solve, you could use a clutch system to take the load off, change the ratio, then reapply the load. But that introduces delay and current CVTs do this instantly and automatically. So this project is more of a demo, it makes gear ratios and transmissions understandable and visible to everybody. I also think it looks really cool. Plus, I left space for additional sensors. This way, we could develop an algorithm to run this transmission fully automatically, optimized for different purposes. For example, as I mentioned at the beginning, we can optimize the voltage and current going to the motor while maintaining a specific output torque and speed. This way, we can reduce energy consumption. Solar panels do the opposite. They aim to produce maximum power by using an algorithm called Maximum Power Point Tracking MPPT. When nothing is connected to the panel, it produces a voltage, but the current is zero, so power is zero. As the load increases, voltage drops, as you can see in this graph. Since power is voltage times current, each panel has an ideal load for every condition. At that ideal current, voltage doesn't drop too much, so the power is maximized. But the ideal load depends on many conditions. Even slightest changes in the sunlight can change the graph and the ideal current. That's why MPPT controllers exist. To constantly find that ideal current and get maximum efficiency from the panel. We could use a similar algorithm to get maximum mechanical motion with minimum electrical energy. For that, we will need a few more sensors, especially ones to measure current and voltage going to the motor, so we can calculate the power it consumes. We also need to know the motor's RPM and the output RPM of the transmission. 
I already left space for sensors in the design, and I will work on the programming of the transmission in a future video. It would actually be great if we could measure the output torque as well. Then we would know the exact output power, since torque times rotational speed equals power. But as far as I know, there is no simple way to do that. That would be another project on its own. If you know a simple way to measure dynamic torque, let me know in the comments. Even if you don't, feel free to leave your project suggestions in the comments as well. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss the next project. I want to thank the 6 channel members who helped me make these projects. You can also become a member and help me keep making these projects and videos by clicking the join button. And even more importantly, sharing the video is the biggest support you can give. If you like this video, check out this one, where I design and build the most powerful 3D printed compressor. It can reach more than 300 psi. See you in the next project.